we fell in love very fast, very mm -hmm. hard, fell into a fatuation rather. But like I said, it just felt like we always knew each other and we knew each other's heart, right? Right. So within the first month, we already knew that this was the person that we wanted to be with, right? And somewhere in October, Jamal came to me and he told me that he was still in love with his ex. Welcome to another edition of the Black and Abundant Podcast, where I am your host, Jamal, a.k.a. J. Scotty Producer. And I have the special honor and privilege to reintroduce to the world my beautiful, my queen, my goddess, my backbone, the queen that holds it down. He feels me. She is my fiancé. Can we all give a round of applause to my fiance? <laughs> Show that invisible ring, baby. Right. <laughs> so I would flash my ring at you guys. You know I would. But we had to go take it back um, mm -hmm. so that they could resize it. They messed me up the first time and resized and sized me wrong. So I got baby fingers. Yeah. It turns out I wear like a 3.5. 3.5. Oh, I forgot. Her, she goes by at by Nia Love. Nia Love. Yes, Neil. So yeah, you can't forget that. Name. That name is global. You hear about it. <laughs> Wait right. and see. But yeah, what's good, baby? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I am still draining. I'm still nasally and sniffly. So honestly, both of us. So if you hear that we sound a little off, it's because we are feeling a little bit under the weather. Well, I don't. I wouldn't even call it a little bit under the weather. That's what they label it as. I look at it as you know. We're just going through a detox. Um, process when, right now, detox reactions, um, because we decided to do some things <laughs> that we know that we yes. should not have been doing. And when you do things, when you go against nature, you have to suffer the consequences. And what we're doing right now is suffering the consequences. So we just got to allow our bodies to do what it does naturally, we purge. All right. Yep. So, but it sucks, right? But for those of you who do, do not know, we are plant based vegans. Um, so anytime that we deviate from that, you know, with overload of sugars and alcohol and anything that's not vegan, it ends up messing with our bodies. Yep. So this is what happens. And hopefully one day we'll have a, well, not hopefully, we're going to have a podcast episode surrounding, you know, why we decided to go plant-based. And I'm going to let Jamal take the lead on that one when that one comes along because my man is well well versed if you did not know so if you want to know more about that or you have any health questions you should hit him up just had to plug you in a little bit baby and that's a for sure right there oh one more thing as you can see you know we sipping on some good old healing herbal tea and yeah. guess what we got to hold it while we're sipping on some tea mugs. some special black and abundant podcast mugs you know we are avid tea drinkers yeah we had to represent so I'm speaking to the people who are avid tea drinkers as well. If you are with the brand and you're down for the cause and you love what we're doing, support. Get you a mug and sip you on some tea while you're drinking with us, while you're watching with us. Excuse me. You feel me? So it's dope. now I got to go put the mugs on the website. So I got these mugs simply because we needed to buy something from a specific website regarding our, our business endeavors. And so I was like, why not get a mug? But they turned out really cute. So yeah. it looks like I'm going to have to get multiple of them. Yeah. So they'll be posted. They'll for be posted. Sure. Let me throw in a quick little nigga real quick for my, my viewers. When you are starting a business and you are looking to receive business funding or whatnot, one of the things that you have to do you have to open and establish vendor accounts. Basically what this is, this is when you purchase things through vendors so that whatever you purchase can report to your business credit score. And one of those accounts that we open is through a, a company called Shirtsy. Mm -hmm. And it's a net 30 account, which is uh, which, which will help you in your process of you know establishing um, business funding or whatnot. So if you're looking for a vendor, go to Shirtsy.com, they're really dope. And we were able to get mugs through there. You can also get shirts as well, hoodies and all that good stuff for your brand. I recommend all starting business owners to utilize that and leverage that platform for Don't branding give and merchandise. Too many nuggets. Right. Golly, they gotta come to you for I mean, something. I'm a man of value. You know? 
I give and I know I'm going to receive an abundance. Okay? Right. Most definitely. So if you did not hear that, he is very well versed in business foundation and business funding as well. I try. So my man is a man of many talents. Thank okay. You. Many skills, much knowledge. So we actually just got his website up and running yesterday. It took me a while to figure out that platform. I build websites now, so hit me up. But either way, <laughs> y'all heard that she builds well. She builds websites. Yeah, that's one hell of a skill, right? I, it took some mastering, and I know several different platforms now. I have my favorite, but I know multiple. But either way, go ahead and head over to Jsco Capital. All right, he can get com. your business started right. Let me serve you. And he can get your credit right too. Mm -hmm. I mean. My man know what he doing. I'm super proud of him. So jscocapital.com. And let's not forget that we got on these shirts oh, right now. <laughs> how, how can we forget about that? Tell them about them, baby. So if you can see, our shirts say easy relationships only. It is, it is derived from this reel that I randomly posted. Break up. They can't change in your presence. Be absent then. Easy relationships only. It's not supposed to be that hard. <laughs> but yeah, I said easy relationships only randomly in the reel, just off the dome. And I was like, I got to put that on a shirt. So now it is on a shirt. Go ahead and head over to lovethehopedealer.com and you can cop one of your very own. I also have it in sweatshirt form because it is getting a little chilly outside. So go ahead and head over to lovethehopedealer.com. Snack you one. For sure. Support. Come on, we need to see more black love advocates for black love, man, because yeah. the world is crazy out here. They're trying to make us fall apart, but now, but we're doing the whole work to be the example and encourage others to do what they need to do to be examples for others, for our black, beautiful, melanated people. You're so handsome. Appreciate that. You I feel love me? You so much. I'll do what I can when I can. You feel me? I love you too, baby. What? Oh, <laughs> you was going for that. Oh, oh, ah. Oh my uh, gosh, how embarrassing. Uh, come on, let's just go do it for the one time. Wow. Well, I wanted to hold this man hand come and he on, tried to handshake me. Man. Oh my gosh. You All know, right. even your fiance can do you dirty. Hey. <laughs> Look, it is what it is, baby. It's all out of love. Mm hmm Anyways, so let's get into it. What we talking about today, baby? So I forgot what I named it. Um I think it's something from from break up to engage. Something yeah. like that. I don't know. I named it something. Did you tell them that this is round two? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we actually shot this podcast two days ago. And it ended up being two hours long because our original intent was to tell our story. You know, how we got here, how we met, the <laughs> things that we went through. And it just ended up being a really long podcast. Turns out that my iPad cannot hold that much data. Mm. So I went through and I edited the whole podcast just for me to not have enough storage to even download it. Yes, I tried everything. Yes, I deleted everything off my iPad. But in order to store the video in the first place, it needs storage. So I just did not have enough storage left over to actually download it. Tell them how that made you feel. Tell them what happened last night. I was pissed. I turned into such a B word. And don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. It was very disheartening when you spend. Because not only did it take us two hours to shoot the podcast. Mm -hmm. But then it takes like six to actually go in and listen to it and edit it. And everything that goes into it. So mm -hmm. it was just very disheartening and discouraging to, as soon as you get done with something, recognize that you just have to throw the whole thing away. Family, welcome to the world of entrepreneurship. Yeah. That shit happens. That's, that's a real thing. That is life. And in the moment, it sucks ass. But I'm glad that we got to reshoot this podcast because this topic, we're going to be talking about our story and our journey and I just want to be transparent with you guys that it has not been an easy one. Yep. It's been very painful and we are still in the process. Like we've forgiven each other and our trust is definitely restored. I trust this man 100% with my life yeah. or else I wouldn't have said yes or else yeah. we wouldn't have even talked about getting engaged in the first place. Right. Yeah. But we cannot lie in the fact that our past does bring hurt. It does bring pain to the relationship. 
However, it's something that we are on the other side of. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I want to talk about because yesterday someone reached out to me and they said how much they admire us and admire what we're doing to keep going. They admire our relationship because we are so transparent with everybody Mm -hmm. and we really are making a difference. So I know that us talking about our story is going to spark something in somebody whether that be someone who's going through a breakup, a couple who's going through hard times, or just anyone looking for some hope in the relational space, Mm -hmm. okay? We're not perfect. We're not perfect by any means, and it took us a lot of hard work to get to the place that we are in today. Not saying, knowing what I know now, we probably would not have gone this route, so I'm not giving you guys... I'm not saying to stay in toxic situations or anything like that. And I'll dive deep into that more as we talk about our story. But knowing what we know now, instead of this being more of a storytelling podcast, I want to focus more on what we learned right? and just what we gained, what we observed about ourselves along this journey and how we were really able to overcome for sure and i want to say for me this is really tough for me anytime that i'm going on a platform and being honest and transparent about my life of course that there's like that initial okay what are people going to think about me you know but i realized that the reason why we're doing what we're doing is it's bigger than us mm-hmm. we tell them about that quote that we um came across yesterday just through conversation that we said what did we say it's in your phone okay <laughs> and while you're looking on your phone, I'm going to do a little tippy tap for you, baby. Give me one second. I want to tap your top lip real quick. Oh, thank you, baby. Am I sweating? Yeah, you hot? Yes, I'm very hot, but it's okay, baby. <laughs> He's cold. Yeah. I'm hot, so we're going through a lot yeah. right now. But either way, what we said is everybody got their own shit. We're just bold enough to talk about ours. Boom. And we had a conversation yesterday about this as well, because one thing that we had to come to a conclusion about as influencers and with our platform and with our purpose and how we're utilizing our gifts moving forward in our lives is that our purpose is not one where we can fulfill it and be liked at the same time. Mm Mm-hmm. Not everybody is going to like us. Not everybody is going to agree with us. We're going to lose friends or whatever along the way. But in order to fulfill our purpose, it's something that we have to do. I said, if I always thought about how people are going to perceive me, I would never post. Hmm. Because a lot of the things that I say are controversial, but at the same time, they're impactful. So I can't stop myself from speaking out about something because I'm afraid of what people will think about me. And Mm -hmm. same with this topic, because we have like meditated on this a good bit and talked about if this is something that we want to want to post. But at the end of the day, we know that this is why this is the platform that we stand on. And this is why people look up to us and follow us and listen. Yeah. Yeah, when you're on the path of purpose, when you make that decision to commit to purpose, what you're basically saying without even verbally saying is that you're putting yourself in a position to not be liked by a lot of people. Yeah. And you have to be okay with that. Look at uh, look at the people who made major change in this world. They had hella haters. Hmm. You know, they had a, had a lot of naysayers and people that judged. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And that's, it is what it is. I'm like, hey, I want that smoke. And that's hard for both of us Mm -hmm. because we'll talk about, especially in the beginning of our journey, how we were such people pleasers. We cared so much about what people thought and we put on a face for the world that was not in alignment with who we actually were underneath. And that led to a lot of our problems and the downfall of our relationship. But we had to get to a place where we basically just say, Fuck them folks. Fuck them folks. Fuck them folks. From a place of love. Yeah. And we still, we're not perfect at this. This is something that we're still going through and still overcoming. But it's one of those things where when you're focused on the goal, you can't let anything stop you. Yep. It takes daily courage. 
Oh, it does. Daily courage. You making the decision to pursue purpose, you know, and just think about it. A lot of people don't reach their fullest potential because they consume their minds and thoughts of the worries about what other people think about them. Yeah. I would say 90% of people. And I just want to say, guys, like, (laughs) if this is, if this podcast impacts you or if our posts impact you, like something that we said, something that we've done, I encourage you to please let us know. Please let us know how we're doing, how we're feeling, how we're really impacting you. Because one thing that Jamal has been encouraging me to do is to start reaching out to the people on Instagram that really impact me. So there's this one girl that I follow who does pole dancing, and she's the one that inspired me to start pole dancing in the first place. And Jamal encouraged me to reach out to her and tell her how much she's impacted me. And it meant the world to her. Mm. She actually ended up responding to me. I don't know if I told you that. You didn't. But she did. And it actually meant the world to her. Um, And she asked if she could help in any way along my journey. And I think that that's dope. And, you know, it's crazy that as an influencer, I didn't see how vitally important it is to let people know, let your role models know that you look up to them. Mm -hmm. Because it really it's a real big booster as an influencer when you're putting everything out there you're open to be judged you're open to be ridiculed again people are not going to like you people are not going to watch your stuff like it's very discouraging yep. at times so again if you if you rocking with us let us know because we're human at the end of the day we are human so it's, it's a huge boost to us and it keeps us going knowing that we're impacting folks yeah but I mean, you said it perfectly you know that is what keeps us going you yeah. know one of the main things that keep us going when people reach out to us like yo man what you said what you did really impacted me it's just like wow yeah you know it's different so well said queen well said all right, so without further ado, without further ado, let's dive into it. Before we dive into it, let me just say my quick spiel real, real quick. <laughs> to everybody that's watching right now, I want to be the first to say that I've come a long way. Yeah, I've come a long way, and I'm still a imperfect growing man. Mm-hmm. You know, choosing daily to fight my lower self and make righteous decisions in the best way that I know how. So, and I'm just saying that to say, like, yo, um, when we dive into our story, like, look, I'm be the first to say I was a real deal scumbag out here. I was a scumbag, and I'm not proud to say it, but I say that to say I am committed to changing my ways. I can't sit here and be like, man, it's other men out here that did way worse and yada, 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 but nah. What I'm proud about is that I decided to get my shit together and go through the hard work of doing the best that I can to become a better man. Yeah. And I'm still on that journey, y'all. Still on the journey. And I want to say for me as well, like, I am also growing. Like, during this, you might look at Jamal like he's the villain. Mm -hmm. You're going to. And the thought might cross your head of, well she crazy for ever going back or she crazy for putting up with that or all of that. Right. But not only has he grown a lot, I've grown a lot. And especially in my self love journey. And this is why I became a relationships and self love life coach and influencer, because this journey has been very long and very special to me and very intentional on the latter half of it. But Throughout this story, I want you guys to know that I did not love myself and I did not respect myself enough to choose what was best for me. Yeah. So it wasn't just him. Mm -hmm. It hurts to say that I played a major role in the reason why she, you know, didn't love herself. Well, the thing is, babe, is that I didn't love myself when I met you. Mm. But because I didn't love myself when I met you, I lost myself in you. Mm. Wow. So you're a big reason as to why I lost myself. Yeah. But you're also a huge reason as to why I found myself, too. Uh, can I? You want to take some notes? Because that, that whole little sentence right there was, was bars. <laughs> That's Thank interesting. You, and 
Wow. Uh, it hurts to hear that, you know, because the last thing I want to do is hurt people. Of course. And hindsight 2020, I learned, I finally learned what that means from you. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I feel like I genuinely did try to do the best that I could with where I was, and I made a lot of imperfect decisions. But I will say in those moments, I made decisions, you know, with the intent of being genuine and trying to keep happiness and peace and people please and whatnot. But in the midst of that, I was hurting people. Yeah. And I lost myself. And a lot of those decisions that I was making was due to a lot of trauma and hurt within myself that I just wasn't aware at the time to mature and, and work through. Yeah. So that it, that impacted you, that impacted myself, and that impacted my previous relationships. So I say that to say, anybody who's watching right now, like, have courage. You know, don't give up on your journey. Continuously um, do the best that you can to try to do right, you know? Yeah. And if you don't know how to, you know, what route to go, just find somebody that you look up to that's modeling, you know, in a way that you want to go and who you want to be. And that's what I did a lot of times on my journey. And that helped Same. me to get to where I am today. Same. Now, let's go ahead and talk about what the heck we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, okay. Because I'm pretty sure they're confused yeah. about, like, what what actually happened? Yeah. All right, baby. So lead this thing. You are already an amazing storyteller, so I'm just going to allow you to lead, <laughs> and I'm going to follow. All right. Um, I just kind of want to break this up into segments and just talk about the beginning okay. of our journey, right? So Jamal and I met through a network marketing company that we were a part of, and this was back in August of 2019. And where I was as a person is that I had just graduated college in May of 2019. So I was very confused, lost. I was on this new journey now of adulthood. I had started my engineering job. I had moved out on my own for the very first time. And I had joined this mentorship program as a way for me to reach my goals, but also it really raised me. And I just wanna say I'm very grateful for the business, and you're going to hear us refer to it as the business, yeah. but the business that we were a part of, it really nurtured me into the woman that I needed to be at the time because I was surrounded by people who genuinely loved and cared about me and were going in the same direction that I was going and that they wanted better for themselves and their family and for their wealth moving forward, mm-hmm. right? So that's where I was at the time when I met Jamal and the way that we met is (laughs) I was basically at our mentor's house for a meeting and he was living with our mentor at the time and I'll let you talk about just where you were back in 2019 but I was there for a meeting early and I was sitting on the couch and Jamal walks in and he's wearing this shirt that says BHM and BHM stands for Birmingham which is where we were both born and a city that we now live in that we both take so much pride in, Mm -hmm. right? And, you know, when he walks in, we say our hellos, how are yous, all of that. And I tell him, hey, I like your shirt. And I said, where'd you get it? And he said, oh, it was like a gift or something like that. And then he proceeds to say, do you want it? And I said, sure. Like, I, I thought he was kidding. You know, but then he, like, disappears for a few minutes. He's doing something. And he comes back out with his shirt off and hands me this shirt. (laughs) Now, if y'all did not know, Jamal has a banging body. Like, he stay in the gym, and he was very active in the gym at that time. Yeah. So, I know he came out to flex. Of course. But, yeah, he, he did his job. He did his job, right? And he gave me this shirt. So, the very first impression that I have of Jamal... He gave me the shirt off of his back. Mm. So that's how I really got to know his heart, which I will talk about. But where were you? You see that, fellas? Y'all see that? You got to do something. You got to do something to make yourself stand out, man. Because fellas, they always go for the typical type of play. But what I did, I just said something I knew it was going to throw it off. (laughs) He was very awkward. Who randomly be like, hey, you want my shirt? Yeah. 
Nobody. She gonna always remember that. You feel me? They gonna always remember you do something that ha- makes them think like, man, that was different. Just a little nugget. Anyway, so where was I? Oh wait, where we go? Boogie check. We good? Yeah, you straight. All right, cool. We may do random boogie checks from here to here, so just bear with us and don't pay us no mind. But where was I in 2019? It was August, so that June of 2019, I had just officially um, achieved my first big boy job, like Yay. corporate America job. And at the time, I was sleeping on the couch, mm-hmm. building a business. I had a team, but my team didn't know I was sleeping on the couch. Man, I was struggling, um, barely, uh, you know, just getting by. I was donating plasma twice a week. To, to fund my business, to make sure to keep my business afloat on top of doing like odd little jobs and stuff here and there. I forgot about the plasma, don't you? Yeah, still I still the have scar? the scar right here, like twice a week faithfully. Yeah. Man, I was I had literally had that whatever it takes mentality, mm-hmm. you know, and um, I was doing odd jobs and just trying to figure it out in the midst of trying to work through my own personal issues at the same time. Um, I had graduated college in 2018, and I went a whole year jobless pretty much mm. i i had like my first job out of college i was a busser at cheesecake factory <laughs> for like a few months and then i went to go work for target for a while and then i officially launched my big boy job so that's just where i was at at the time but also during that time too i was in and out back and forth um in this long-term relationship with my my ex-girlfriend and um I was, it was 2019, I was like 24 maybe. 24. Yeah, yeah, 24. I met this, this um, my ex and uh, eight, when I was 18. And 18, 19, 21, 22. Six years. Yeah, like six <laughs> year, yeah, thank you, Queen. Six <laughs> year relationship, on and off. And so that, I say that to say that I was heavily intertwined. Like my identity was um, wrapped, with, wrapped around this person. Yeah. So I had no, even though I was doing great, uh, I guess business-wise, and I was a good, genuine guy. I tried my best to be nice with people. I was struggling in this area of relationships. Um, I dived into it. Uh, I honestly want to say for the wrong reasons. Looking back, because I didn't necessarily take the time to figure out, hey, why did I want to do I, I had this mindset when I was 18. Like I was just a scumbag, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but this person... Uh, took me just saw something different you know and in the midst of that like I was I, I'm I'm surprised to know why I decided to get into a relationship and stuff like that and just think about the mindset that I was in the person I was back then but yeah but we just on and off and just a lot of pain and issues and whatnot so dealing with that on top of sleeping on the couch like I said and just trying to find my way through Trying to figure out what the hell that I was doing, where I was going, what I what I wanted, yeah. you know, I really didn't have a true, clear concept. Well, I kind of did, I, I kind of did. I, I knew what I was working towards, um, but just being intentionally t- um, on the path of being intentional about like, because I would do things like you know write stuff down on the day, like write my goals and stuff. Mm-hmm. I would just not get into a place of getting like super clear where I wanted or where I wanted to go and stuff like that, mm-hmm. without like verbally saying if that makes sense so yeah 2019 august that's where i was at yeah and i also wanted to say that what also happened in august and i talked about this the first time we shot it was that i was sexually assaulted yeah and this is a very sticky topic that i don't like to talk about i have opened up about it before in the past on my platform but it's been a couple of years now because I don't like to bring it up, especially with everything surrounding, you know, he said, she said, the Me Too movement and just sexual assault, rape in general. Mm-hmm. I don't like to talk about it. But literally like a week before I met Jamal, I was I went on a few dates with this one guy. And I had a bad feeling about him the first time. I remember I stopped talking to him, actually. But he came back and was like, hey, I, I'm sorry if I offended you in any way. I really wanted to you know, get to know you and stuff like that. So I thought he was coming from a genuine place. Um, and maybe he was. If you ask him, he probably does not even 
it probably did not even cross his mind that he assaulted me. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't really see how, but it's all up to perception. And when I say this, everyone might perceive it in a different way. So however you take this is however you take it. But he was someone where initially I did consent to having sex with him. However, when it actually came down to it and when we were in the position to do so, I said no. And I changed my mind. Now, some people out there might be thinking, okay, well, that's not right because you consented to it and it is what it is. This is a big reason why I did not open up about it because the first few people that I told, I had very different reactions. I had people that sympathized, people who had gone through the same thing, but also people who said, well, that wasn't right Mm. because you consented to it. Mm. So however you perceive this, and this might help someone who's been through the same thing, but I did say no, and I said no several times, and I said stop, and it got to a place where I had to fight this man off of me, and in my head, that was very traumatizing to me. Mm. I felt like my trust for men was pretty much gone, my, my relationship with my body And for you guys who do not know, and we're going to talk about this in future podcasts, I have a very negative relationship with sex and just my sexuality and my body. And to the point where for a long time, I would put my guard up and I would be very defensive and I couldn't even give my body to somebody. So this is partially the reason why. And the reason why I bring that up is because that kind of gives you an idea of the head space that I was in when we met. Yeah. So you came into the, to the journey broken. Yeah. You know, curious to know what place we was in before that incident. So before we met again, I was, I was very confused Mm -hmm. and very lost. Um, I never had good relationships in the past. Like I, I've mentioned this a million times on this podcast, but I did come out of an abusive relationship and that was my first love. Right. And after that, I just had a negative train of experiences with men mm. where I did not love myself. I did not know what a positive relationship meant, what a healthy relationship was. And then coming out of college and all of the things that I went through in college. And during the summer before Jamal and I met, I was just kind of mingling, meeting as many people as possible. I'm in a new city. I'm living on my own now. I'm in this new business. So I'm mingling. I'm going out on dates with guys. And it's like I knew what I was looking for. I, or I knew what I wasn't looking for, rather. Mm-hmm. That, that was it. I knew what I wasn't looking for. So anytime that I came across different men, I just kept getting a lot of what I did not want. So when I met Jamal, it was like a breath of fresh air. Mm. Now, how we eventually got to talking was that I opened up to a new friend of mine, which was at the time, which was Gabby. And I I credit Gabby to our relationship. Shouts out to Gabby. Kill, man. Some yeah. real ones. Gabby, thank you so much for pushing me to do this. But Gabby, I told her how I felt about Jamal. And it was a thing within the business that we were a part of that we weren't allowed to like fraternize with other people in the business. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of like ignored my feelings that I had for Jamal. But Gabby is the one that convinced me to reach out to my mentor, to our mentor, and ask him what he thinks and ask him for his permission to get to know Jamal better and his thoughts. And I did. And he gave us his blessing as long as we kept it a secret, which we did not do very well. Right. We did a terrible job of doing that, but we did. So the very first time that we had a conversation, like a a real deal conversation, knowing that what we felt about each other was mutual because we had very awkward encounters between those times, yeah. <laughs> but it was very like awkwardly flirting. We're both very like weird. Yeah. people. So this was the first time we actually got to sit, sit down and have a conversation. And when I tell you that it felt like it just felt like we knew each other already. Mm-hmm. 
Like it, we were already on the same page. We had a lot of the same just ideals and values. And I could just see Jamal's heart. And I knew that he was a beautiful person. Yeah. Well, uh, what I took from all that is, number one, we both came into the start of our journey from broken places, you know, not really knowing ourselves and dealing with a lot of baggage and hurt. And I was just sitting here thinking that my mature self would have been like honest and transparent and told you what I was doing, what I had going on in my personal life in regards to just like relationships and stuff. Yeah. And I feel like that would have saved a lot of heartache and pain. But like I said, just back then at the time, I, I did it for whatever reasons. So let's just go ahead and rip the Band-Aid off. Yeah. And talk about what happened. So we fell in love very fast, very mm -hmm. hard, fell into a fatuation rather. But like I said, it just felt like we always knew each other and we knew each other's heart. Right? Right. So within the first month, we already knew that this was the person that we wanted to be with, right? And somewhere in October, Jamal came to me and he told me that he was still in love with his ex. And the way that I took that was, okay, maybe he still has feelings for her because I had been through my own things. Like I said, I had my own encounter with my first love and I still, the feelings were still there but I had decided for sure that that's not the route that I wanted to take and I was not gonna go back, right? That's what I thought that he meant. That's not what he meant. He <laughs> meant that he wanted to go back to her. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened. I realized that back then that I struggled with being abandoned and letting go. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sitting and thinking about the, what I was going through and just having visions like just where I was mentally. Like I, I literally stressed myself out because, you know, I was like this, like me, my ex, like what do I do? But I didn't love myself enough to be real and honest with, with both. That just shows just where I was as a man back then. And I, I would say I link that to you know, my good old mama issues, you know? And I want to say this as well. It's not that Jamal is devoiding responsibility here. Right. Because he did what he did. Mm -hmm. Right? And we've had many, 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 many conversations about this. And it's not that he's just not taking responsibility and trying to blame everyone else. Yeah. But this podcast is going to be, like, really focused on what we learned and where we knew that that was coming from to maybe help other people identify where maybe their bad decisions are coming from as well. Yeah. And to add on to that, Queen, I just want to be clear one more time. I'm, I'll be the first to admit that like the person back then was a true scumbag. I made some horrible decisions and I'm going to be transparent and open up about the things that I did. But also at the same time in this conversation, I want to, you know, just sprinkle in bits of things that I've learned about, those those situations about myself which is where i was at because i feel like that's good to because i want to show that like you know i've grown and uh self-evaluate and you know pull some things out of those times where i was yeah and i just want to what was the conflict you know let let them know why were you bouncing between me and your ex what was your attachment to her what was your attachment to me what was going on in your head yeah, great question. I'm gonna do my best and answer in the best in the best way possible. Um, <clears throat> I might check one too. My ex was very the relationship that I had with my ex was very you know comfortable and comforting. You know, com mm -hmm. should I say complacent? No, maybe, but it was a such a norm to me at that yeah. time. And I didn't understand the concept of that you may potentially not be with this person. I didn't entertain that thought. Mm -hmm. It just backed in. So, like I said, the relationship I have this this person, and I hate to say this person. I don't want it like. But it's uh, also like, do you all want to say her name? Yeah, <laughs> just out of respect, I don't want to say her name, but she knows. I'm pretty sure she's going to watch this episode. Hope you're doing well. Um, 
but yeah, it just their relationship would brought a lot of comfort and normality to my life, you know, and she was just a person that I was so used to communicating and seeing and thinking about for years at a time. Mm -hmm. So the thought of letting that go, it never like crossed my radar. Or even when I entertained a thought or I was put in position to that relationship would be at risk, you know, me splitting apart that person, I, I like retracted, I became afraid. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, I realized that I was afraid of letting relationships go that meant a lot to me or, or being abandoned. So, but at the same time, I, I had an inkling that this probably wasn't going to work and I also had a, a, a idea of like what I wanted yeah. too at the same time and learning, okay, what I don't want. Because when you're in these relationships, you, you learn what you want and don't want to a certainty, right? Yeah. And I knew some things, man, when we came across, it was just like a lot of sparks and light bulbs that went off like, oh, hold up. Wow. Mm. Okay, let me let me see what's up. Yeah. So yeah. Expanding on that a little bit and just putting it very plainly, the relationship that Jamal had with her was very it was one thing I've talked about before in the past is that men hang on to loyalty. Mm -hmm. And time and history is something that's very important to them. To the point where they will sacrifice other things in order to hang on to someone who they believe is loyal. Right? Yep. So Jamal was in a place where they had been together for six years. And 1824 is a very pivotal, transformative time in anyone's life. And I want you to think back to when you were 18 to 24, right? I know I was a completely, starkly different person between 18 and 24, right? So that's where they were in that history and that, that attachment that they had together. But Jamal got to a place where, they rec where he recognized that they were diverging. So what she wanted out of life and what she valued was very different from what Jamal wanted out of life and what he valued. And we talk about this all the time, where it's very important to find somebody that's going in the same direction as you and who values the same things as you do because we've both been there. Mm -hmm. We both know what that's like and how, how draining and how it puts a block on you. It's like it, it binds you to where it's hard to grow Yep. in the direction that you want to grow because you're with someone who's going in the opposite direction. Yep. Yep. So that's what he was faced with. And just imagine being in a place where you're attached to someone who you feel connected to and almost like bound to because of the history and because of the loyalty, because of the things that you've gone through, but also finding it hard to accept the fact that you guys just aren't on the same path anymore. Mm -hmm. And then meeting someone who is aligned with you, who is on the same path, who does value the same things that you do. And just imagine that, that conflict within, mm -hmm. within him. I had big conflicts. I went to war with myself every single day. Like I literally, I would be at work, couldn't focus on my job, stressed out Yeah. every day because I was, going back on for like man what the fuck am I doing like what I you know and it was a very stressful time and great job articulating that too thank you for <laughs> like just saying that in a beautiful way but I realized you know because I did not let go I not only stunted my growth but I was stunting hers too yeah you know and that's one thing we got to be careful not to do is to not being afraid to let go and we have to do the work to get to a place within ourselves that we love ourselves so much and we love that person enough to let them go yeah and i like i said like my higher self told me plenty of times like bro what you doing yeah and the thing that jamal failed to do was be honest with himself about what was going on be honest with us about what was going on and just trusting 
his own judgment, Ooh. trusting his higher self. One thing I will say about Jamal when we met, and I'll, I've said this before, that I feel like I've always been able to see Jamal's heart. Because even after all of the terrible things that he did to me because of his attachment to her, I still saw him and I still felt for him. And you might think that I'm crazy, right? <laughs> that might sound crazy. But the thing is, the big difference is, is that it got to a point where I, I saw who he was but I had to take his actions for what they were mm. and I had to let him go. I'm not saying that you should stay with somebody because you know that they're actually a better person underneath than what they're showing you. You have to take people's actions for face value at a point to protect yourself. Facts. And like I said, I did not love myself at the time and I wish that I would have let go of Jamal sooner. I should have, but because I did not love and respect myself, I did not. Mm. So that is the mistake that I made. And I'm telling you guys, even if you feel like you know that person and you know that they can do better, and you know that they can be better. It is not your responsibility to wait around for them to do that. Mm -hmm. We hold on to the idea of people's potential of what we see, what they could be for far too long instead of looking at what their what their actions are saying to us in those moments. Yeah. And that's exactly what I was doing. That's what I was doing. We were doing that to each other in very different ways. Mm. So just fast forwarding through our relationship because, you know, in October he told me that he was in love with her and I looked him in the eyes and I asked him, you know, who do you choose? And he told me that he chose her. Yep. And that was very painful. It was very painful for me to accept, and for a while I did not accept it. But eventually I got to a place where I said, okay, I'm letting you go. And Jamal, within like a month, <laughs> was blowing up my phone, trying to get me back again, that that conflict that he was feeling within himself. Um, I think that was really tugging on him. Yep. And when we got back together... Or not necessarily when we came back together, because we came back together as quote unquote friends for a second. He was still bouncing back and forth between talking to both of us um, and really just being confused and conflicted between both of us, which caused a lot of drama and a lot of very uncomfortable and painful situations in between. Yep. And I won't go into the details of everything that happened because we learned our lesson and we do not want a long podcast. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that those things really matter as much. Yeah. So eventually we did get into a relationship in March of 2020 and it felt like everything was going right. I don't believe you were talking to her um, during that time. And in September, well, in July of 2020 is when I lost my job. And I had to move in with Jamal into that, into our mentor's house. Mm -hmm. So it was us two cooped up in a tiny box room. Literally like a box. Yeah, with three other men in living house. in the house. Yeah. So you can imagine how stressful that was on us as individuals, mm -hmm. but also in our relationship because he was working remotely. I was unemployed for six months. And that was just... It's like an attack on my confidence. I felt like I was falling into a depression yeah. and I became very codependent on Jamal emotionally. And that put a lot of strain on him. Mm -hmm. That September, we also found out that his grandfather was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer yeah. and was given six months to a year. Rest in peace. Yeah. Shout out to Pops. Um, but yeah, we were both going through a lot during that time and the thing that we did not do during that time was communicate yeah we were not communicating about what we were really going through and how we really felt about things and i think it's because we weren't being honest with ourselves about how we truly felt about everything and what we truly wanted yeah let me sprinkle this in. I realized that a lot of my problems is linked to my inability to be honest with myself as I reflect back over my life. And I proposed the question, you know, why 
are people need and why are people afraid to be honest with themselves? Because I ha- it's going to rock the boat. It's going to rock the boat. Yep. It's going to rock the boat. When you're honest with yourself, you have to accept the fact that some people aren't going to like your decisions. A lot of the things that you're going to do just aren't going to align with the person that people perceive you as. Mm-hmm. And that's, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow. And sometimes you, you choose that comfort in what is the most known to you, the people that are most known to you, the situations that are most known to you. You accept that comfort over living in your truth. Ooh, for sure. That's so true. I spent a great deal of time please know the people for a long period of time to where that came my norm in life. But throughout that, I knew that what I was doing and being wasn't what I truly wanted to be. Mm-hmm. But I continued to beat this mold with, to please my family and other people. And every time I made a decision to do so, it's a shot at your true self, you know? And that's exactly what I was doing. And, and that being that way just affected my life. And that's what I saw in Jamal. Mm -hmm. And I want you guys to understand this, is that when I say that I see Jamal, I saw Jamal's heart, is that I saw that he was putting on a mask for everybody else. Mm. Coming from the background that he did, a super, like, church background, his uh, grandfather raised him, and he was a very well-known, very respected pastor at a church. So growing up with that background, it's like everyone has a watchful eye on you yep. and you don't want to rock the boat too much because people are going to judge you and people are going to look at you differently. You have, you're so worried about image when you're in a position like that. When you're the pastor's son, you're in a position where everyone's looking at you. And to be even more transparent, that relationship with my ex pleased my family. Yep. My family loved that relationship because of her background, because of, yeah, she was a, a beautiful person inside and out, very sweet, kind of loving, um, great head on her shoulders. But we can ignore the similar backgrounds that we we share. And, you know, like I said, back to trying to please people, mm-hmm. you know, uh, my family loved that. And I just want to be real. His family did not like me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 His family did not like me. Low key still don't. Yeah. <laughs> low key still don't. Um, me and his mom have a great relationship now, and that's all yeah. that matters. And luckily, before his grandparents passed, I was able to build a beautiful relationship with both of them. Mm-hmm. However, we can't we cannot shake the fact that they really loved his ex because of her family and how sweet of a person she is and just the image that she has. Is yeah. Just, very clean, very nice. And yeah. the image that I hold is not that, okay? Complete opposite. The image that I have, you guys you guys see me. Like, I'm not afraid to speak my mind. Mm-hmm. And that's how I am in real life. Like, I'm yeah. never afraid to talk about the things that I stand for. I'm never afraid to speak my mind. And sometimes that's very intimidating and scary or oh, yeah. it looks raunchy to people. It doesn't look holy like it doesn't look Christ like it doesn't look, you yeah. know, all that stuff. And yeah, you're a, you're a certified boat rocker. Yeah. And I come from a uh, family of people who just swept things under, under the rug. Yeah. And that's what I was so used to. But I was well, also drawn to your ability to just rock the boat and be yourself and be bold and be open-minded. Yeah. Because that's what I truly desire to be, and I saw that in you. Yeah. I was like, ooh, shit. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I like that. And I'm glad. And I feel like our relationship really was able to to bring out the best in Jamal mm-hmm. and what he sure. really wanted to be. And I definitely want to talk about that as we get towards the the end of, you know, our, our breakup and how we were able to rekindle things. Yeah. So fast forwarding a little bit, we broke up in October of 2020, and the way that it happened was very terrible. Oh yeah, this one is crazy, y'all. Uh. Um. I'm going to say this within less than a minute because I want to conserve our time. But basically what happened, we wanted, we went on a trip to Dallas for a week at the beginning of the trip. Um, within like day two, he went out with an old friend of his, which is a woman friend, very attractive woman friend and did not tell me until he was walking out of the door. Um, Mm. we were staying with his sister at the time. Um, 
but he did not tell me that he was going out with this woman until he was walking out the door at like nine o'clock at night. Hmm. Yikes. And then he told me that he was, you know, going to be back within two hours. Three hours later, I'm calling him trying to figure out where he's at. Keep in mind, it's 11 o'clock at night um, or 12 o'clock at night now. Um, and he's not answering the phone, not texting me back, nothing. Um, and then when he finally comes home, it's late. I'm distraught. I feel very disrespected and hurt. And I let him know that. And I tell him I can't do this. And he basically said, okay. And he let me know that he was going to break up with me anyway. Damn, Jamal. <laughs> yeah, and I did not see that coming. Like I said, we were not good at our communication and where we really were. So it really just felt like I just kind of got knocked out of left field. Like, I did not see it coming at all. And you can imagine the pain and the confusion that I was going through. And, you know, the fact that I had to spend the rest of the week mm. in Texas with him. Um, and then when we got home, I had to move out, get all of my stuff and move into my mom's one bedroom apartment and sleep on her couch. Um, and I was still jobless mm. and I was having a door dash every day while going through this breakup, feeling like a failure, feeling like, you know, my business was failing, you know, all the people started to quit my team. Um, and it was just, a I fell into this depressive state. And on top of that, I was confused about what happened. And this was another bad thing that Jamal did was that he basically convinced me that it was my fault that we had broken up. Um, he just kept telling me that I needed to grow. I needed to mature. Maybe if I loved myself more, he would want me. And I know what y'all are thinking. Nigga, what? You, you the one that needed to grow and mature yeah. and love yourself more. And yes, that is true. Mm -hmm. That was true. And, I mean, we have our own ideas of why he might have done that in the beginning and I think it's because men you know how you are like you come back into a woman's life just to see if you still got her yep right it's like he knew what he wanted but at the same time he did not want to let me go for real mm -hmm. so that's what that was um and it wasn't until that was October 2020 it wasn't until January 2021 and completely forgot to mention this. And we did this last time. We kept forgetting to talk about it during 2020. I went on a spiritual journey. So yeah. in 2019, when we first got together, Jamal basically told me that if I wasn't rocking for Jesus, he couldn't rock with me. <laughs> Essentially, he was a very devout Christian um, at the time. So in 2020, because I never really gave Christianity a try. Like, I came from a Christian household. However, as an adult, I never gave Christianity a fair shot. So I said, okay, fine. In 2020, I'm going to commit the entire year to getting to know Christ, doing all the things, not only just going to church and joining a small group, reading the Bible, getting a devotional, staying in it, the word every day, not just the surface level things, but also diving deep, having deep conversations with myself, having deep conversations with God, having deep conversations with other people to really truly understand this whole Jesus thing and what it was like to build a relationship. Yeah. So I don't want anybody to discredit my journey because anybody can tell you during that year, I tried my damn dish. She did. She I tried so, 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 so hard, but there was always this feeling in me, always, ever since I was a little girl, ever since Christianity was exposed to me, where it just never sat right in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And I cannot deny that. Yeah, and also to add another piece in there as well, around October 2020 when we went to Dallas, when, while we was down there in Dallas, I actually had my first really real deal spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. where I took the lid off Christianity and gave myself permission to to see what it was that I wanted to, you know, identify as and, and go on my own spiritual journey. And that was like the beginning of my my journey. And long story short, like I know this is going to be a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow, but I'm finally at a place with myself where, you know, I love myself 100 percent. I'm walking in my truth and I wake up every goddamn day feeling excited and happy with where I'm at today. Um, but yeah, I no longer, thank you, Queen. Thank you. And before I say what I'm about to say, she had no influence on me in the decision that I made when it comes to my spiritual 
walk. We we did this separately. Yeah. She had no idea. I had no idea until literally we shot this podcast the first time. Yeah. I did not know that his spiritual awakening was then. Yeah. And um, basically what I'm saying is I made a decision to no longer identify as a Christian, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to to go on my own spiritual walk without that that label not saying that i don't live by christian principles and have a you know a christ conscious we're and moral yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's just that we no longer you know we do not identify as that and we have our own beautiful spiritual journey that that works for us so. right and again i want you guys to put this into perspective i said i was going to commit all of 2020 he had his spiritual awakening in 2020 and he went on his own spiritual journey after we broke up mm -hmm. so i had no idea that he was going through this and i was still going on my walk with christianity and then i did promise that if christianity changed my life in 2020 then i would get baptized in 2021. Mm -hmm. so in january of 2021 his grandfather baptized me and Jamal was not there, which yeah. that was that was basically the nail in the coffin where I said I'm done with him. Um, but the night before I got baptized, we were on the phone and he told me that he was no longer a Christian. And that was my first time hearing that after I had already decided that I was going to get baptized. And keep in mind, I did not get baptized for him, nor did I get baptized with the intentions of being a Christian. Mm -hmm. I got baptized because I, that was my promise to God that if Christianity changed my life, then that's something that I would do. And it did because it, it, it made me more spiritually conscious. It grew my relationship with God. It's just that it further solidified for me that Christianity wasn't the route that I wanted to go in order to further cultivate that relationship with God. Mm, well said. Wait, boogie check. You good, baby. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. In January of 2021, we finally decided to, or I finally said, okay, I'm done trying to please you. I'm done trying to get you back. I'm done trying to change for you. I'm just going to focus on me. Yeah. So, I did. And in 2021, I really went on my own single journey. And I did not talk to anybody for a few months um, after January. It wasn't until like May where I started to really start to get out there and date again. And the dating game was not fun at all. I just kept getting exposed to things that I did not want. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I was out here in these streets. But one thing that I do want to talk about is that during this season of finding myself, because we do not talk about the season enough and what it looks like to go out there and find yourself. And what it looked like for me was just being open and honest with myself about everything. I said to myself, Lania, what do you wanna do? Lania, who do you wanna be? This was when Nia Love was created. Mm. It was last year, like last April. I think it was April 1st last year. That's when I created Nia Love as the woman that I desire to be for myself, right? And during this time, I was just honest about how I was feeling with myself. Like, yes, I was out in these streets. Yes, I feel like I used men in a way. But I was honest about it. I was very, like, a lot of women and a lot of people in general cope. And they don't admit the fact that they're coping. They don't admit the fact that they're using sex as a coping mechanism or drugs or alcohol as a coping mechanism. I was like, you know, Linnea, you out here partying and doing whatever you want to do because you're coping. Yeah. And that's okay. I mm -hmm. give you permission to do that for this season as you figure out who you are. Damn, that's so good. So coping is a way of running away from yourself. But what you decided to do, you be honest and transparent, which is a form of running to yourself. Yeah. Being real with yourself. So even though I was doing things that I, that I don't necessarily, I don't even look back that, at that as a regret because I don't regret it. I'm glad that I gave myself permission to be irresponsible, to be a little wild, to be a little crazy. I'm glad that I gave myself permission to do that because I had never done that before mm -hmm. in a way that was open and honest. I found one of my journals from that time a few weeks ago. And as I was reading it, I was like, dang, at least I knew what I was doing. Yeah. At least I was honest because I would go home and write about it. Like I knew, I knew exactly where I was and I love that. And I, I say that to say 
as you go on this journey of finding yourself, give yourself permission to do whatever you feel like you need to do in order to do so. Mm. Don't let other people's opinions, don't let these past perceptions of what you feel like you should have done or who you feel like you should be get in the way of that. Do whatever you need to do. Mm. That's so deep. I just had this thought about life. Just about honesty, you know, honesty is a true superpower. Mm-hmm. It's a scary superpower, but once you truly understand the magnitude of what it is and what it can do for your life, it can be an amazing thing for your life. And what, hey, you remember that book, The Untear the Soul? Yes. That was a game changer. That book changed my life. Yeah, and just, if y'all don't know about that book, The Untear the Soul, please cop that, man. By that, Michael Singer. Yeah, really, really good. But just looking back over my life, I struggled with i realized that i struggled with letting go and identifying myself how should i say it help me help me articulate what i'm trying to say with how people put place their identity onto people we actually think that we own these people Mm. and that's exactly what i did with my previous relationship I literally thought that I owned this relationship, and by me thinking that, that I own my that relationship, I identified, I placed my identity in that relationship. Mm. So that which that allowed me to, it hurted me my, in my decision to letting that that relationship go. Yeah. So, damn, that's deep. So, that was a huge reason as to why I struggled with that previous relationship because I wasn't in a place with myself to let go. I talked about this yesterday off camera um, where I feel like a part of you letting her go meant letting go of the you that you knew, Mm. the you that everyone else knew. Yep. And that's, that's hard to accept. Yeah, it was painful. And where, talk about where were you last year and what were you going through? Yeah, so last year, I was in my final round with this relationship on the last go-around. Um, like I said, even though it was the signs were there, yeah, I still entertained it for whatever reason because I, I thought I owned that relationship. My identity was in that. I wasn't strong enough to let go. And I actually, that was the year that I read that book. When I read that book, that really helped start the process of letting go and finding my identity within myself. Mm-hmm. I'm talking some other things, but we can talk about that later. So 2021, December 2020, I left the business. Yeah. And uh, going on five years yeah. in the business. So I made a decision to go, on, uh, go out on my own. And that January, I finally got to a place where I had my own apartment for the first time. So I had my own space. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, during that time, um, just being honest, I was going back and forth. At the, I think she still lives there. But, you know, at the time, I was traveling back and forth to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um seeing her and also during that time i started my entrepreneurial endeavor you know and you know as you go to atlanta you meet a that's like the mecca of entrepreneurship yeah, black entrepreneurship is so thriving. I, yeah so as i was down there trying to figure out what was going to be the end the end of this i was also down there making connections and I, a lot of the connections i made is played a huge role into where i'm at entrepreneurial wise you know but not saying that that was why I went down there. Like, no, I knew that this was, I had to feel like this was the last final draw with this relationship, but I just had to see. You had to figure it out. I had to yourself. figure it out. So, yeah, um, I did that for for a while. Sorry, family, the camera died on us. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, the last place I left off, I was just saying, like, right around October, um, I started to embark on a new experience, spiritual experience, which kind of not kind of greatly helped me in to go internally mm-hmm. and ask my do some shadow work basically do some real serious shadow work as to why was I operating doing what I was doing and why did I struggle with letting go why did I place my identity and did not want to have the courage and build the courage to formulate my own identity mm-hmm. and the thing that I'm talking about what I did was Shroom, 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 changed my mother in life. Yeah, and shout out to my brother Kamal Ra who introduced me to that. And bro, you changed my life, you changed my family's life, you changed Nia's life. Yeah, you Peace did. Peace to you, God. 
But yeah, and, and through those experiences, I just started to become more enlightened and co like come to clarity within self. And, but just because I had those moments didn't mean that like I was there. Yeah. You know, I was, I, I made the decisions right then and there. But that was like the start of the ending. And right around that time, we was having more and more conversation. It was obvious like, yeah, bro, this ain't it. Yeah. And then I, I finally accepted that. And I started to, to go on my own journey and, and heal, you know, and, and trust myself. Yeah. And I realized that, like, bro, that was actually the best thing that you could have ever done for yourself. And around this time, this was September, October of last year, Jamal actually came back into my life. <laughs> and I was very reluctant at first. I had to put my put my guard up because the very first time that he reached out to me, I could tell it was coming from an emotional place. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to let him know. I was like, hey, I think that you reaching out to me is coming from an emotional place. And I just don't think that that's fair. I'd rather you be intentional. Mm -hmm. So I'm choosing to, you know, ignore your advances. And when we talked, um, maybe like a month after that, I let him know that I was dating somebody at the time. And I wanted to figure out if this was something that I wanted, you know, outside of Jamal. Without the idea of Jamal, I wanted to figure out if this was somebody that I wanted. And before he even reached out to me, I did have my doubts. I did have my concerns because it was coming upon. I always say that it takes around three months for me to truly see if I want to be with somebody or not. And it was coming up on that three month mark. And I had I was having serious conversations with myself and wondering, is this someone that, you know, I could see myself with? Is this something that I want to continue to pursue? And eventually I came to the conclusion that it wasn't what I wanted. Um, but that person and I still had a good relationship. I was honest with him throughout the entire the entirety of me figuring it out. And he knew about my relationship with Jamal and towards the end of our our being together or whatever we were doing, I let him know, hey, um, I don't know if I can trust Jamal. I don't know where this is going to go. However, I know that I have to figure it out, whatever it is. And it's kind of like what Jamal did. Like I knew that whatever Jamal and I were about to embark on, it was going to be the last time. Mm -hmm. But I had to give myself permission to just see what it was going to be. So we didn't really connect. Jamal and I talked every now and again. Um, and it was never on a let's get back together type tip um, in 2021. It was just we would talk every now and again and just build a friendship. Mm -hmm. um, and we did that for a few months until December when his grandmother passed away. Yeah. And me and his grandmother had a great relationship. Even after we were broken up, we would still talk on the phone every now and again. And she would just check on me. And she just, she poured so much life into me. And she really kept me afloat throughout the breakup. Because she she was someone that, she felt like a real grandmother to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have a, a close relationship with my grandmothers. Um, and, you know, one of my grandmothers is Korean. So there's always that cultural yeah. gap. But with his grandmother, I was able to actually build like that, that loving relationship. So it was painful for both of us to lose her. So we saw each other for the first time at her funeral. And that's how we reconnected. Yep. And rest in peace, grandma. Yeah. Ah, yeah, man. Wow. But, um, so in, in 2022, when I moved into my house and... We started to see each other more often, but Jamal was still very much so wanting to be friends. And I had gone to a place where I was like, no, I want to try. I want to figure this out. And neither of us were budging on that. So one day I basically wrote him a letter and I said, you know, I got to let you go. If this is if you're still in the journey of finding yourself and you're still in your single season and that's what you want to do, that's fine. But I have to be honest with myself and tell you that that's not what I want. Yeah. And that I actually want to figure this out. And me trying to be your friend is only hurting me. Yeah, I completely forgot all about that. That I was in like a real deal, like single season. And I, I did let you know, like, yeah, I'm just, I'm practicing singleness right now. Like, yeah, just I'm trying like, to. I just want to be by myself. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, he was. So I was just kind of like, yeah, I can't do this. 
and he was like he basically I, I went to give him the letter and he basically put it in his pocket and never read it um and he came into the house um and we talked and i can't even remember what we talked about but yeah. the next day we ended up going on my first room trip mm. now you guys might be thinking all types of ways about shrooms and whatever about drugs in general and it's not even really it's a, not drug, even a drug but it was labeled that way in order to criminalize it and to keep our people away from the truth mm -hmm. um but it, neither, neither here or there i went on my first shroom trip however you guys may feel about that that's whatever um but it saved my life and i have to i have to put that bluntly my first shroom trip um jamal said earlier that he could just see that i had just this pain in my heart in my life and if you knew me you could tell that there was just this underlying pain no matter how much i tried to suppress it no matter how much i tried to be positive there was always this underlying pain within me mm -hmm. so when we went on that shroom trip i felt all of it come out all on the once. table all of my pain i it was the most painful experience i've ever had it was awful okay i was screaming crying i just felt it just felt like all of the pain in my life came out all at once and i could just feel it right and then during the trip during that moment my father called me and for those who do not know about my relationship with my father he's been in and out of prison my entire life so and he's in he's in jail right now so when he called me, it was very out of the blue because I did not talk to my dad that often. But he literally called me in that moment just to tell me that he was proud of me and that I don't have to try so hard. Mm. And that was the first time my dad had ever said something like that. Mm. And when I tell you, it felt like I died. It literally felt like I died in that moment. It's like, all of my my daddy issues is what created a lot of my pain in my life. Mm. And this feeling like I had to be somebody. I had all of this weight on my shoulders for feeling like I was the one that was going to save the family. I was the one that had to have everything together and had to be perfect and go and get the degree and make millions of dollars. Always had that on me. And so I never really got to truly be the woman that I knew that I, I could be. But when he told me that, I died that that image that I had of myself that that ex those expectations that pain yeah. all of it left yeah man and it just add on to that y'all like I literally watched this whole experience with my own eyes like she came into the experience one way and she came out completely changed completely different person and I was like god damn that's crazy like mm -hmm. that was a real spiritual like awakening like that was like some real spiritual work right there and i want to say this too my name is jamal jackson and i am a huge advocate for shrooms if you like me cool if you don't i won't give it up anyway <laughs> but yeah so that's what happened and it the way that we like to talk about it is that it was like a metamorphosis yeah and that like that i was coming out of the cocoon and after I felt all of that pain, I felt immediate relief. Yeah. Like I just felt like I was released from the bondage, the chains, the pain that I had been experiencing. And for a while, I thought that that was going to be a temporary feeling. But ever since that trip, I have not been the same. Mm -hmm. That woman that came out of the cocoon, that's who I've been. Yeah. And... It's beautiful to say that that was like the start of a brand new, beautiful journey for the both of us. Yeah. That was the moment where Jamal finally said, OK, now I can chase you. Because being honest, he saw that that pain that was within me and he couldn't. He had gotten to a place along his spiritual journey while we were apart where he had his own standard for himself, where he knew what he wanted in a woman. He knew what he wanted out of life. So coming into contact with me again and recognizing that I wasn't quite there yet and just accepting and being honest with himself that my healing wasn't quite there yet. So going through that experience where he saw that I was set free, he was finally like, okay, now, now I can chase you. 
Yeah. Now we can actually start to build something. And I was ready to chase too. Uh, I, I was really on some lion vibes chasing a gazelle. You was, <laughs> was that gazelle at that moment. I was like, okay, let's go. And ever since then, it's been like that. Yep. Yep. And it's been, we've had a lot of tough conversations about our past and where it's come from. There is a lot of hurt mm -hmm. there. Being real, it's still a painful still thing. Still painful. But we had to, he had to rebuild that trust with me. He had to date me. He had to prove to me that I was the only woman that he wanted. And he's still proving that to me every single day. That's going to be a never ending journey. And I'm proving to him as well that I'm always going to be the woman that's going to elevate him mm -hmm. and push him into the man that he desires to be. Yeah. Y'all know she, we're just not getting to a place in our relationship, like maybe a few days ago where she said that, you know, I finally trust you a hundred percent. Yeah. It wasn't until after we got engaged. Yeah. That I said that. And I want to talk about the engagement really fast. Okay. Um, I'm just going to post videos and stuff about it so you guys can go look on my Instagram. Yeah. Um, at By Nia Love and look at the videos and pictures and all of that. Cause he went all out. Yeah, I'm waiting to post so I get the photos back. So I haven't posted yet, but I will soon. Yeah, we're still waiting on photos. Yeah. So, um, but he went all out. And I just want to say that the reason why I wanted something so big and why I encourage uh, uh, all couples to, to really plan for the engagement is because that process, the month that he's been putting in all of the time, energy and money into planning the engagement did something within him mm -hmm. to where it solidified within him that this is something that he wanted to do. It wasn't just out of the blue spur of the moment. No, it was intentional. Yep. But, we had to recognize that the actual engagement, it was only two hours and it flew by really fast because the adrenaline's going, everybody wants pictures, all of this. Like, and you don't really get to savor that moment. You don't really get to enjoy it. So what we did the day after is kind of like the real engagement, quote unquote, where we opened up to each other about how we did have this empty feeling because of the engagement moving by so fast and it just wasn't what we expected that it was going to be. Yep. So we sat down on the bed and we just talked about why we wanted to get engaged and why we chose each other and just the commitment that we have to each other moving forward. And not saying we haven't had those conversations in the past, yeah. but saying that it's different now that we're engaged and we know for sure that we're committed to each other. Yep. And like she said, that like we we're at a place in our journey where we overly communicate. We realized communication was one of the key indicators that why we failed the last time. And we're dedicated to making communication like the top tier, most valuable thing that we value in our relationship. One, one of the most valuable things. The more we communicate, the less problems we have. And the more we elevate in our skill set, there's always still room for growth in communication. It's crazy how it works. But that conversation was just, it was different. It was. It was very, very different. And it's because we were just in a different place now. Yeah. We're engaged yeah. now. Hey. The feeling's different. Hey, let's get it. So, yeah. And now we are where we are. That was our story. And we read it to some up. Yeah. No, we've, we've definitely come a long way. And I really hope that listening to this podcast really opened up some things for you guys. Um, that the journey is not going to be perfect. Is not about the destination. The The engagement was a split second, okay? Yep. It's not about the engagement. It's about, or it's not about the proposal. It's about the engagement afterwards. Yep. Right? So it's always going to be about the journey. It's not just about the destination. Which requires you to show up every day brand new. Yeah. Every yep. single day. We wake up every morning and we remind each other why we're here why we love each other, yep. who we are every morning. Yep. Facts. That's the key. All right. Let's wrap it up. All right, baby. If you did not know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them, baby. I am at By Nia Love. If you need anything, relationships and self-love, I am your gal. My website is now up. I spent. Tell them who you are. What? Who am I? Tell him who you are. What? I don't like when he do this to me. 
He like, tell me who you are. And then I'm expected to be like, I'm a queen. I'm a goddess. I am. I am. Let, let, him, I mean? let him know what's up, I baby. I love that. Yes, babe. Yes. Gosh. I am a queen. I am a goddess. I am Nia Love. And I am the best relationships and self-love life coach that there is. I know what I'm talking about. And I'm confident in my craft. And if you are confident in my craft, which you should be, then head over to lovethehopedealer.com where you can book a free consultation with me and we can talk about your life coaching needs and set up further meetings. You can also buy these shirts once again that say easy relationships only. Cop that. Okay. Um, also, what, what else do I do? I don't know. You're a website developer. Oh, yeah. I make websites. <laughs> Let's just let's move on to you now. Yeah. <laughs> I do a lot of stuff. Check me out. Yeah, we both do a lot of stuff. But yeah, once again, my name is Jamal, aka Jaco, the producer. My website is now live and ready to get working. If you yeah. need assistance with your credit, reach out to your boy. Let me help you get to that next level so you can start building assets and creating wealth for your family. Also, credit rebuilding. Also, if you need help with forming your business i got you it's a lot that goes into a it a lot i took a lot of time studying trial and error and i just compartmentalized to it all to where instead of it taking you a whole year to get it right i get it done to get it done for you in 30 days or less mm -hmm. so come holla at Talk me your shit, baby. on top of if you have health issues whatever whatever you need and what what, what all we got recipe books you know cleansing programs what else we got baby like yeah. that's a lot of stuff reach out to check out the website the the my credit repair website is www.jscocapital.com i'm so proud of this man we are both very knowledgeable in both of our respective fields we've put so much time energy and studying and our own experience we are never going to speak from a place of like we haven't been through it our dang selves right so we know we know what we're doing all yeah. right so tap in with us yeah tap 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 in let's get it all right love you guys with that being said peace peace